you can't work them out. So stop telling yourselves, oh, next year, you know, get things right down, then you come to my church and nobody can chat to me. Welcome back to the Cohen's Family YouTube channel, that channel to be a part of. If you are new here, please consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and also, guys, remember to like the video. It helps a lot. Cool. With that being said, let's get into today's video. As you can see, guys, in today's title, we're going to be talking about how can I give my life to God. This question comes from my Bible study the other night. Um, we had Bible study at church and we dealt with this topic and I feel the need that I need to share it here on our channel. Amen. To those that are tuning in, um, both saved and unsaved. So if you are saved, you can probably teach somebody these three important steps that they need to take. And if you are not saved, you can apply these three steps. And you too will be a part of the family of God, the kingdom of God. Cool. So the first step that one needs to take in giving their life to God is first recognize, it's on the screen, recognize that you're a sinner. See, recognize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, including myself. Yes, pastor, sin. Everybody sin. In fact, the word of God tells us in Psalm 51 that David and us, myself, we were born in sin and shape in iniquity. We are born with the proclivity. We were, we were born to live for ourselves. We were born to live to achieve our own personal goal, our own personal agenda. Amen. We were born with the natural propensity or the proclivity to sin against God, which is do that which is evil. So first recognize that I am a sinner. Yes, you are a sinner. You have lied before. You have stolen before. You have acted in deceit before. You are lost before. You fornicated for before. You commit adultery before. You bad mind. You covish. We, we do all sorts of sin. You know them. You know the sin that you have done. I don't need to list them out. Okay. And fornication is not the only sin. Cool. So everyone has sin. Sin. So first acknowledge that you are a sinner. Amen. So number two. So after recognizing that you have sinned, um, we need to turn from our sin. So that is number two. We turn from our sin. And this is called repentance. Recognizing that I'm a liar, I'm a thief, I'm an adulterer, I'm a fornicator, I am a Malice keeper, I am holding a grudge, I'm gossiping, I'm um, not forgiving. You know the many sins. Turn from those sins. Make a conscious decision that, hey, I am no longer going to live in this pattern. No, I'm going to turn over my life to God. I'm now going to live in obedience to God. I'm now going to live a righteous life. Not that my own righteousness can bring me into heaven, but I'm going to try my utmost best to live for God and allow the righteousness of Jesus Christ to bring me into his kingdom. So make a turn, a conscious decision that, hey, I'm no longer going to live this particular way because this particular way leads down to hell. This particular way is unhealthy. This particular way is only hurting me. You know, sin only hurts you. It doesn't hurt God. You cannot spite God. You cannot spite the next person um, that is in your life or anybody at all. You're only hurting yourself because sin is a reproach. Sin holds you back from your divine purpose, if you never know. The Bible says in Second Peter, I believe, yes, in chapter it says, we are for laying aside the sin that beset us. So sin, it beset us. Amen. Sin is not nice. Sin only come to destroy you. Sin only come to kill you. Sin only come to derail you, to distract you from what God designed, what God predestinated you for. Okay, so it is best we turn from it and turn to the ways of God. Turn to live a life in obedience to God. It won't be perfect, you know, but it's worth it. 
I wonder if you get that a while ago. It won't be perfect, but it's worth it. And God will grant you his grace and his mercy to keep you as you truly live for him, as you truly attempt each day to live for him. So after recognizing that you're a sinner and turning from your sin, the third thing that you need to do is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Um, it's a struggle for most to accept Jesus. I don't know why. Because some people believe as if it's their own righteousness that, that is going to bring them into heaven or their, 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 their own goodness that will bring them into heaven. That's not how it works in the kingdom of God. It's really believing in the work of Jesus Christ. Believe, like literally believe that Jesus Christ came from heaven he died in my stead. I, he paid the price for my sin. He paid the price that I could not pay for myself. He paid that price for me. And so I live my life in view of that. I live my life believing that. And because I believe that, I am rewarded by God. I am now credited the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. So don't wait until you fix up your life to you give your life to God. No one so it work. Come to Jesus just as all you are. Come to Jesus with the sin and iniquity. The call is not for the righteous. It is for sinners to come unto him. Amen. So come with the fornication. Come with the adultery. Come with the lusting. Come with the addiction to pornography. Come with the addiction to alcohol and um, lying, stealing, malice, and unforgiveness. You know the sins that you are struggling with. Come to God with them and he will work them out. You can't work them out. So stop telling yourselves, oh, next year, you know, get things right. I'm done coming to my church and nobody can chat to me. Mm -hmm. And I say, go, accept the free gift of salvation by simply believing in Jesus Christ. And that belief must be accompanied by works. Because I believe in God, I'm going to live my life for him. And if you don't know how to live for him, well, you need to get yourself a Bible to see what is required of you. Amen. So when you live for God, in the end, you will, you will inherit eternal life. When you die or when he comes, you will get eternal life. So accept Jesus as Lord. Don't only accept him as Savior because most want to accept him as Savior. But not Lord. They want Jesus to save them from the debt in their bank account. They want to save him from debt, um, eternal punishment, save him from problems in life, save him from this and save him from that. But nobody wants Jesus to be Lord. Amen. So when Jesus is Lord now, he's in control of your life. Jesus is now the landlord of your life. He's now the boss of your life. You no longer live your life for yourself. Amen. You live your life for Jesus. You deny yourself. I want to do some things. I would love to sleep with that nice girl. But because my life now belongs to Jesus, I am going to deny that feeling and live for God. Amen. I want to tell a lie. You know, it, the lie will get me out of this trouble. I know for a fact. But guess what? I'm living for Jesus. So guess what? I'm going to tell the truth and be a whatever consequence that will come from the situation. Amen. So when you're living for God, you live differently from how you used to live. You no, you no longer live for self. You live for Jesus. When you accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. So those are the three steps that you need to take in order to be saved. Cool. First, you accept the fact that you're a sinner. Yes, you have sinned. And then you turn from it. You don't live in it. You turn from it. Cool. And accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, hey, I accept the work that you have done on the cross for me. And I believe that this is enough for me. And through that work, you are justified. Which means you are forgiven of your past, present, and future sin. So, I hope that you learned something today. Um, please share this video with somebody. I believe that it will help somebody to have a better understanding or perspective of what it really means to be saved. Because there's much more to this, um, I could say, but I'm going to stop there. But best believe it, my friend. That's how you get saved. And when you get saved, the Lord gives you the Holy Spirit to live with inside of you, which will give you the power to overcome sin. And power to live the Christian life. And also the desire 
to live the Christian life, the desire, the things of God. Cool? So, if you have any more questions surrounding the matter, if you want more clarity on the matter, feel free to leave a comment and I'll um, address it. So, I am Sherwin. I hope you learned something. Remember, guys, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cool? And share the video to one particular person that you think need to hear this. See you in the next one.